All right, in this video, we are talking about culture and the differences, culture, uh, differences in culture that are out there. So in class, um, I had you guys read about three different situations um, that uh, dealt with uh, cultural differences. Uh, so one group read about a guy, a Russian named Yuri, um, coming to the United States and how friendly he thought Americans were because they were all inviting him over to his house, their, ha their house. Uh, situation two was about a Dutch woman living in Paris and um, becoming friends with a French man and inviting the French man over for dinner and signals got crossed and apparently he thought that they were gonna do a little something extra other than having dinner uh, and was very disappointed and very upset when he found out that they were just having dinner and stormed out. And then the third situation was um, about an American that went to Mexico and was uh, at a friend's home in Mexico and it was admiring a beautiful serape on the wall and how the Mexican responded by insisting that the American take the serape home. Um, and uh, the discussion was to was was to whether or not he uh, should have taken if the American should have taken the serape as well as if he took it uh, should he have reciprocated with a gift. So we discussed those kind of differences um, in class. Uh, a couple other differences that I wanted to make note of as far as your notes are concerned. Culture um, basically it provides an agreed upon way to communicate, to play, to eat, to drive. Um, I uh, talked about in class that uh, when I was in high school, between my junior and senior year, I went to um, visit uh, Australia and New Zealand. And uh, for one night, we stayed with uh, a family when we were in Auckland, New Zealand. And we stayed with this family, and it was funny because we had been so used to um, all of these Americans on this bus driving around uh, Australia and then New Zealand um, and when we got off we we were paired up with a family and uh, we drove home with them and it was just funny because uh, I didn't even think about it and we went to go get in the car and there was the mom the host family mom and then the her son who was probably about I don't know 11 or 12 um, and they were getting in going to get in the car and the son was getting in the front left side of the car and I was like geez what's going on I'm like man is he is he gonna be driving and the thought never occurred to me until I got in and I realized oh wait they drive on the other side of the road uh, the, the steering wheel is on the front right side of the car not the front left side so that was you know slight differences for me um, communication is also different. Um, for example, this picture here on the left here is a, a picture of a Maori person. A, that's a native uh, New Zealander. Um, so like our Native Americans, these are native New Zealanders. Um, and that's how they greet people. They had press their forward head and noses together. Um, then you also have the traditional um, Japanese where you, where you put your hands together and you bow. Um, other things about communication, uh, personal space. Um, when you're talking to someone, uh, do you go and um, go and how much space do you have between that person that you're talking to? Um, in other cultures, like for example, um, Latin American cultures, um, Mediterranean cultures, Arab cultures, they are um, more, they, uh, they like less personal space. They're uh, much closer together when they talk. Um, and they have a lot of touching involved so you know they while you're talking to someone it's not uncommon for them to touch your arm or your face uh, and for Americans this is just unheard of and Americans um, get very confused by this so uh, it's kind of funny because um, you know I've had several instances of, of um, students talking about you know they know somebody who is a specific culture and you know the way they communicate and that they stand a lot closer and they're constantly touching you and it's it's not the same okay so I wanted you to be realizing that you know there are a lot of cultural differences you should know about um, personal space particularly highlighted in your book so you should know specifically about that for your test 
Um, other things, uh, big impact on differences between cultures, but there's little differences within cultures. So what I mean by that is, is that if you look at and compare, for example, okay, personal space. Personal space, there's a huge difference between what kinds of personal space Americans like versus the kinds of space that, uh, you know, Latin Americans like. Okay, but within a particular culture, there's not a whole lot of differences. So if you're talking American to American, um, they like about the same amount of personal space. Okay, but if you're talking about Latin American to Latin American, they like the same amount of personal space. It may be different from culture to culture, but within that particular culture, it is the same. Okay, um, the other thing that I wanted to really highlight with um, cultures um, oh, I had I was going to tell you this, um, I thought of this uh, yesterday when I was watching um, TV and I saw a uh, commercial for the new movie uh, that's out, uh, it's an animated movie, it's called The Box Trolls. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about it, but I thought it was really funny, it's kind of a visual thing, um, but I'll try and explain it. Um, the Box Trolls, they had a... Uh, preview for the movie where it, the premise of the movie is these creatures called box trolls live um, below ground and somehow they end up um, with a human baby and they're raising this human baby and so the whole movie is about now sending this human baby to um, interact with other humans and the box trolls are trying to explain to this human child uh, you know, what they need to do when they're interacting with humans. And so this box troll was telling this child, um, and he was just telling the child that, okay, when you meet somebody, you look them in the eye and you shake hands. All right, good advice. But if, you're, if you've never interacted with somebody, you don't know what that means. So then they cut to uh, this human child interacting with another human, and he goes up in that person's face and like staring at them, so they're making eye can contact. And then he holds up his hands um, to, on either side of his, his body, and he just holds them up and shakes them. So he's shaking his hands. So again, another example of different ways to communicate. Okay, um, the other thing that I wanted to mention um, and talk about, and I know you read about it in your book, but the idea of collectivism versus individualism. Um, collectivism is uh, much more common in um, Asian cultures, African cultures, um, and the United States, we have mostly individualism. But collectivism is this idea that um, you have, your value is more with, um, trying to um, bring value to the group, okay? So you're trying to bring value and honor to the group, to your culture, to your family, to your country. And individualism, um, you are trying to bring value to yourself. So you're trying to elevate yourself, okay? So the idea here is, is that when you have somebody um, from a collectivist culture, what they do is they have um, when you have somebody from a collectivist culture, they are uh, going to be wanting to please the group. They want to show honor to the group, okay? Uh, but uh, when you're um, an individualist, okay, from an individualist society, you're trying to uh, improve yourself. So if you think about it, okay, it's interesting because individualism, us Americans, we have put priorities on our own goals over the group goals. Um, so we don't really care about, you know, what the group wants to do, whether that be um, your family or the school at large or the country. A lot of people don't have a vested interest in the group at large, but you are going to set priority on your own specific goals. And individualists also define themselves in terms of your personal attributes. So when you define yourself, you are more likely to define yourself by attributes um, that are specific to you. Um, but the problem and the downside of this individualism is, is that you oftentimes have more loneliness, divorce, homicide, stress-related diseases involved in individualism because you're more stressful because you are basically going it alone. Um, collectivism, on the other hand, okay, you're giving priority to the goals of the group, okay? So um, you are 
valuing what the group wants to do. So it's not really about you, it's about what the group wants. Um, so it, it, it is good from the sense that it gives a sense of belonging. You have a place that you belong and you fit. Um, it gives you a set of values. Um, it gives you um, people that are, care about you. Um, and in this assurance of security that somebody is going to take care of you, okay? Because the group is has a vested interest in you because you are a member of the group, you provide for the group. Um, it also makes sure that others um, never lose face. Um, I thought it was interesting when I was um, looking at examples of collectivism and individualism, there was an example where it talked about um, from the standpoint of let's say uh, somebody in class um, letting another person, um, let, let's say you have like a worksheet that maybe you had for homework and maybe um, somebody else in the class did not get it done and you're letting that person copy your answers onto their paper. Well, if you're an individualist, okay, individualists will say, oh no, that is not right, you cannot let them copy, That's, they're not gonna learn, how are they gonna get better? The collectivists, on the other hand, will look at it and say, I'm, I'm helping him. Um, they forgot to do it, and so I'm helping them. I'm helping um, the group at large and making sure the group at large is prepared. Okay? Um, I do have an example of this. This is from the movie Ants. Uh, if you saw it when you were a kid, um, this is the opening sequence of Ants, um, and we'll talk about it as, after um, I show it to you. So here's Ants. Okay, um, the, it, this video is going to be a little long, so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to post this um, YouTube uh, address on uh, Canvas underneath this video so you can watch um, Ants, um, the, the part of Ants that I showed, um, and then you can come back to this video and I'll talk about um, the, what you saw in Ants just now. So pause right now. Go watch the video on ants and then come. Um, part, uh, the beginning part of this is illustrating collectivism. Um, we have um, this, the main ant Z. Um, he's pretty much wanting to be an individualist in a collectivist society. Um, and the thing about culture is, is that culture is one of those things where you don't notice it until you're outside of your own culture. Okay, Z is kind of an exception here. Um, you know, I love that um, the uh, worker that he was talking to, I didn't catch her name, um, the worker that he was talking to um, was telling him, you know, come on, you gotta work for the betterment of the colony. Um, you know, and that's the idea of a collectivist society is, is that you're working for the betterment of, of the society, of the group, and Z just, didn't get it. He didn't follow along. Um, it's the same kind of principle. It's the idea of, you know, um, culture is one of those things. It's like a current. If you're swimming with the current, you don't notice it. All of a sudden you turn around and you swim against the current and it's that much harder. Same thing. If you're in your own culture, okay, and you're actually doing what you're supposed to be doing, all the other ants in that, uh, in that opening sequence, they are going with the current. They don't really notice the culture. Z is going against the current, and that's why he notices the culture and he notices the differences between him and the way he wants to run things. All right, that's what I wanted to say about culture. Hope you're, uh, let me know if you have any, uh, any questions. Bye.